All right, so I am searching and saving reference images for my composite landscape. I already have a vision for what I want it to be, an underwater, dark, barren, radioactive, rusted, debris-filled, kind of coral-filled seascape. And so I'm going in and I'm opening images in new tabs. Oops. <laughs> and sometimes that just downloads them right away. And when it just downloads them automatically, you go to downloads and you'll see it as the first thing. You can bring it into your folder. And you can check its quality there. Let's see. There's another PNG, I thought. You might also see other suggested images by Google, but the problem is they might not be big enough, but sometimes they are, like this one is. So just make sure that they're at least over 2,000 and they fill the computer screen and you can see that within the browser before you save it. And that's a really good one. So when you bring a really good one over, My computer is so full, it's not giving me preview icons anymore. Your computers are. Um, if I restarted my computer, it might start showing me the icons again, but you can mark them with, I usually use green to show like ones that you think are really useful. And that one's gonna be really useful. I think this one will be too. Open image in new tab, view it. Yes, bring it over. Maybe save it here, mark it green then bring it in to your folder. Curious about this one. That's tiny, yeah. Some of the radioactive waste, not huge, but this would be maybe in the background. Oh, that's not good. You need them to come in as image files. So if they come in as web, web photo files, you can't use them. That's a new format to protect them. And so we just have to be more diligent, right? This one's good, I definitely want that. Some of the essential elements. So this one's just, it's cool. It's just kind of too small to be useful. But this one I'm hopeful for. It's small, but because it's piled up like that, I can put it into my background. So it wouldn't work as a middle ground or a foreground element. It can work well as a background element. And I can make the colors match. So I'm gonna, ah, it's, is it a WebP? No, it's a JPEG. Good. Okay. Save as a JPEG. There we go. Now, all of these images are copyrighted, and I am not allowed to use them for my own creative expression without fully transforming them into my own work. So we are not going to take any one of these images and then just add things on top of it, like stickers on a sticker sheet. We are going to fully compose something new and our own. And that's where the sketching comes in. Okay, so now I have enough of this that I can start with the sketching. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take, we need at least five, right? So I'm going to take the five or so that I've indicated as being the most useful. And I can select multiple by holding down command and clicking on these, all these that I've marked. And then I'm just gonna double click to open them up in preview. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Five images that are the most useful. Now, these aren't even necessarily the best images, right? If I open all of them, I've saved 20 or so. I can look through and I can identify others. Right. If 
But for now, I'm going to sketch with just five in mind. So if your icons are showing, you don't need to open them up in preview to see them. But my icons aren't showing, so I do need to. So with your icons showing in your sketchbook, I want you to start sketching. So first, I'm going to do it horizontally. And I'm going to say, OK, I know I need a few elements. I need a foreground. I need a middle ground, three distinct layers of depth. And I need a background. I don't just take one photo and then just put other things on top of it, right? So for my foreground, I'm thinking I want this kind of crazy tree coral. So I'm going to put it here. It's going to kind of sketch it in. Give it a nickname. So this is tree coral. And it's number one, my first reference. It's this one right here. Okay, see that? Then I might even go in. Depends on how organized I want to be. And find that and rename it. You know, I can just click on it and hit return. And then put it number one, tree coral. I know, I know I'm going to use that. Okay. And I go back to this. See how the name changed. Then I think, okay, that's my foreground. That's in front of everything else. What's behind it? Well, I'm thinking these kind of boxes, these cement pylons. What should I call that? I'll call it Cement City. You guys with me? I'm going to go ahead and really darken this edge so I can see where one element is and then another element. Darken this edge. And this is exactly how compositing works for the Marvel movies, for the Star Wars movies, for whenever you're building a fantasy background. Okay, so I'm going to call this Cement City. And it's number two. So I have foreground, and then here I have middle ground. Okay, background. I know I want this pile of nuclear waste, but I'm thinking I don't necessarily want it here because this composition has a lot just going on on the left. So instead, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to put that pile here in the far background. That's going to be pile of waste. I'll just call it waste pile. Now, so far, it doesn't matter that this is underwater or not. Right? These are just the elements I'm combining together. Their colors don't match. You know, I'll I'll show you how I fix all of that. Okay. Now, what about the rest of the space? like maybe right here. Maybe I want the foreground barrels here. Because I need five elements, right? So I'm going to call these a close barrels. And that's number four. And that's basically foreground again. Right, right in between my foreground and middle ground. It's transitioning. And then I don't really want all those barrels anywhere. They're too organized looking. So then I need open water. And that's going to be number five. So I might need to find that from another source material. So let me go ahead and name these. So this was the close barrels, number four. It's okay if you spell things wrong. Bio, looking for the green stuff. This is my cement city, number two.
is you're going to want to be able to find these references. I've got my waste pile. Looks like it's from a National Geographic story. And the waste pile is number three. Okay, and then, yeah, those are the only ones I have. Now I need to find some open water. So I've got some there. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and open all of them in preview. And then try to find one that's good for just the open water. Ah, this one. So water surface. The pixels, they're okay. They're okay. So water surface, where is that? I'm going to mark that green. I'm going to call that five open water. Okay, so now I've got all of those there. Now, yeah, I like that one. Now I'm going to call this big coral, because I'm going to use this in my vertical. Now I want you to force yourself to sketch it again in a new composition, but using many of those same elements. You can add a new one, you can subtract one, but now I'm just going to open up those big ones that I'm basing my composition on, so I can see them all right here. Right? I'm going to save my sketch here, because I'm doing it digitally, and now I'm going to arrange them in a different way to show a composition. So these are my options. This time, I still like this as the foreground. So I'm gonna do the tree coral, like right in the major foreground like this. Pretty big, it's beautiful. But maybe I'm relying on it too much then, we'll see. Okay, so that's gonna be tree coral, number one, but a different part of it. Then I was thinking I might do some of the big coral. I want to do the close barrels here. So that's going to be number four, close barrels. Then I wanted to do the big coral behind that. So that's more middle ground. So that's number six, big coral. So it's like designing, just with loose sketching, a puzzle, just like you'll see in the past student work and the instructor demos. Then I'm gonna do Cement City. It's gonna be here, because it already has some man-made perspective to it. So it kind of shows how it's gonna be. So that is number two. And then I'm thinking just open water, number five. So I don't need the, the waste pile in this one. Now, notice the difference between the landscape version and the um, portrait version, right? This one is more expansive, feels like it covers more space. This one feels more intimate, and you're getting into the details of it. And yet, we want foreground, middle ground, and background on all of them. Right. So you get to choose how you're going to make your, your scene appear. And then you have to choose which one you're most interested in. And actually, I think I'm most interested in this one, because I haven't done a vertical in a while as a demo. So you're going to put a star by the sketch you think in your sketchbook you're going to use. All right. So then the next step, let's pretend this is in your sketchbook, right? doesn't mean I can't add other things to this, but I have five elements, one, two, three, four, five. And I have an idea and a plan based.